Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I wanted to do a distro review and I was looking around for various things and then somebody left me a comment to look at Deepin 15.7. And so I decided let's go ahead and look into that. I mean, I've looked at Deepin even not too long ago um, and uh, I'm not overally impressed with the distro. However, I decided to go ahead and have a look and it turns out that 15.7 does bring a lot of really good improvements to the operating system. And of course, if I'm not mistaken, I don't follow the development of it very closely. I think that because of the controversy of the tracking script that was in the software store, I think that they took it out, either this version or the previous version. I can't remember which one. But I think that uh, the, the one tracking script, which is essentially like a Chinese version of Google Analytics, uh, was in the software store, and that has now been removed to the best of my understanding. If you know otherwise, uh, for sure, please let me know. But I remember seeing something about that. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to have a look at it. First, let's look at the release notes. Um, so they did a lot of, I mean, really a lot of improvements uh, from 15.6 to 15.7. Um, first and foremost, the, they really greatly reduced the size of the ISO image. So the download is uh, 2.5 gigabytes now instead of 3.1. Uh, and I was able to download it by grabbing a server to my location in about five minutes or so. Um, the basic one, the main download uh, from the main site, um, that would have taken hours upon hours. Uh, but fortunately, they have a lot of mirrors, so you can download it. You can see the size comparisons, Windows 7, Windows 10, Ubuntu, uh, Deepin 5.6, Deepin 5.7. So you see that uh, they did greatly decrease the size of it, about 20%. They also had some things, if you're utilizing Deepin on a laptop, they added a lot of power-saving modes, power-saving switches, and, and things to really reduce the consumption, which even means a drop in... Um, even a drop in the um, uh, memory optimization. So it went from 1.1 gigabytes to uh, 830 megabytes. So that is a really big drop in the system memory. Okay, so you can see where this lies. Now it's somewhere around where uh, Windows 7 was, which is pretty good. Uh, lower than Windows 10, lower than Ubuntu, and certainly lower than Deep in 15.6. This is one of those things that would have been nice to see them compare something like a true GNOME. Even Ubuntu is better than the regular GNOME. They also add some fixes for the, um, the Wi-Fi microphone options. Uh, we'll be looking for those inside the switches. And uh, I booted the system up. I didn't do anything else other than that. So uh, we'll just kind of have a look at it together to see, uh, to see what we think. So uh, there are just a few other little things and some bugs that are fixed. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, boot up the distro and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are on the login screen. So I'm just going to type in my super secret password that definitely isn't deep in. And... Uh, we do have some nice animations. The um, the uh, wallpaper is pretty nice. This is everything is default. I haven't really poked around in here. Um, it did uh, boot up with a slower size resolution, but I was able to just go right into uh, just right clicking on the desktop, clicking in your display settings, and I was able to get your uh, the size already set up. So overall, the 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 overall look of this this is very very nice. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this style of dock, but we can actually change that as well. I got to remember how. Um, I think you can do mode, efficient mode like that. And then you can change this as well. So right here, this is more like the Mac or, or a GNOME system. Uh, you can also change this um, from being the, um, I think you have to do it over here. There is a way that you can uh, change your your sizes, your menus, and things like this. So you can see you can place it on any of the various locations. We can do size alterations to it. Keep shown, keep hidden, or smart hide. And there's some plugins. I somewhere you can. Oh, I think it's up here. So here we have a uh, sorting function that's very much like this. 
I believe the one in the upper corner will convert it into a menu. So any way you like setting this up, you can go ahead and, and do that. Um, I don't really have a preference specifically. Even this, this is really nice. Uh, or going for your full size. It's it's all really nice. They do have a lot of a lot of good um, good just good setup. We have Google Chrome by default. We have WPS Office, which I am not a fan of WPS Office mostly because of the uh, the EULA that comes along with it. If you've not read the EULA, um, you should have a look at that. Uh, we do have Thunderbird uh, by default and just a, v a few other items. Uh, we have a print settings. We have a deepened screen recorder, uh, desktop, show desktop, control center, package manager. So it has all of your basic tools that you might need. I think the graphics driver manager will enable you to uh, install your NVIDIA drivers if you have those. Let's have a look at what the Deepin store looks like right now. So I really do like the theming on this. It is it is nice. Um, so there you go. There's Firefox. Let's go ahead and install that. It should be prompting me for a password here. Yeah, well, maybe not. Um, so I don't know if that's a big deal to you or not, but just booting this up uh, and uh, clicking to install something just <laughs> it just installs it. It doesn't uh, doesn't ask us for anything else. So there's that. Let's go ahead and do a search for. I would want to use uh, LibreOffice. So the search function, everything within here is pretty nice. It is still looks like it is still giving us um, LibreOffice 5, maybe? Um, okay, yeah, you can go away now, search. Uh, but that's why well, I would expect that, because I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Ubuntu 18 did ship with LibreOffice 5 still. I, I can't remember for sure. Uh, but everything there in the Software Center looks pretty good. Let's also have a look at... Um, uh, do we have a system monitor, deep in system monitor before we really do anything else? We can see we are running at just under a gig. I should have turned that on before I did anything. Uh, but it is definitely running a lot less memory than, uh, than the system was. Um, and I'm wondering how much this particular GUI, um, GUI installer does. So let's go ahead and do um, a terminal and let's install HTOP. Let's well first let's just see if HTOP's installed. Nope. Let's do sudo apt install HTOP. I really like the um, I like the um, uh, uh, like the terminal here. It's kind of a throwback to the nice green terminals. So I'm just installing HTOP because it's a terminal based uh, a terminal based um, system monitor that's not going to eat up a lot of memory. Uh, you probably can't see the number right here is where it is, but it tells me 699 megabytes of memory is being used, uh, if you can see that. Uh, it's very, very faint, uh, but it is, that's actually very good. So overall, um, overall, this is, this is a nice setup. We have hot corners. Uh, you, we can set those up. Uh, I think if we right click here, somewhere I saw the ability to adjust your hot corners. All right, let's see. Um, so let's go in and uh, boot up the settings. So just clicking on your settings. This is the thing that I'm not sure if it's necessarily good or bad. Um, I really like the Raven menu on Budgie, which is what I'm using right now. But I think they did a really good thing in moving the settings off the Raven menu because this can be very confusing. Of course, we have the uh, brightness, which isn't going to do anything right now because I'm not on a laptop. I do have my main system volume, which I should be able to toggle that without any issues. And then inside of here, we have all of the variety of different um, uh, different settings all within the menu here, which we can short uh, navigate to them over here. So uh, just by utilizing all of the icons down here, we can get to wherever we need to get to. So here's the brightness, the resolution. We can rotate the screen if we want to. Uh, default applications, we can select which one's which. Looks like my default application is Firefox, even though uh, Google Chrome was 
the um, was installed on the system out of the box. So you can see where all of the different uh, default applications are. That's default applications, personalizations. I really like this theme. I'm not, I'm not even sure I want to mess with it. They do have a dark theme enabled. We have a variety of different icons you can pick from. Uh, the icons for me, they're okay. Um, I don't like these modern type of icons, but uh, they're okay. So you can install a VPN right in here. One of the things I want to do soon is do some more videos on VPNs and things. Uh, that'd be a, a nice little handy video series to do. Here you can uh, control your speakers, your microphones, uh, your date and time. We can auto sync those. Of course, this is your power management. So monitor will suspend. I can set really quickly here how well the monitor will suspend, when the computer will suspend. This is this is the type of t stuff that I would really like to see in some other distros. Just a, an easier, clearer, more more concise uh, power management system. Here's your touchpad. Keyboard, um, let's see, we have keyboard language, system layout, shortcuts, uh, repeat delays. Here's updates, there's update settings. So update settings, it's gonna auto clear the cache. We can turn on auto updates, but it is toggled off by default and then we can actually switch the mirror. I'm guessing that that's probably uh, a far away mirror. And then of course we have our basic system information, 15.7 with 64-bit, um, here's your processor, my memory, disk, edition license, and the boot menu here. So I can uh, do the startup delay. What happens if I turn that off? Whoa, helps if I type the password right. and then there's theming or not. All right, so there's your settings. It does feel quite a bit lighter than it has been in the past. We do have the options for the menus. Um, you can't add, there's not any widgets or, or anything like that that I know of for the panel other than, than there's plugins, which gives us sound, power, network, and date and time. Let's see if I can actually change the clock settings. That might be something uh, I change from inside of the, uh, let's see. Might be something I changed from inside of here. I did see a date and time settings, didn't I? Okay, time settings. I'm not actually seeing a way I'm not seeing a way to um, to change my clock settings. I'll have to look that up and see if I can change that. Uh, also, I don't think, oh yeah, I guess we can. Um, looks like we can put things on the desktop. Let's see if I can figure out how to add desktop icons to this guy. Hmm. That's another thing I'll have to look into. Obviously we can use our, we have the ability to put desktop icons on here. Um, I just don't know if there's a, a quick way to add those. Let's see, display settings. I'll have to look that up as well. So if anybody knows off the top how I can add my main desktop icons to the desktop, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, there's the wallpapers. Let's see what we have in the way of wallpapers. I do like this wallpaper changer. It is a very nice wallpaper changer. And then we can pick whether we want only desktop or only lock screen. Ooh, that's really nice. So out of the box, this feels like a very, uh, just a very complete system. It has just enough system tools. It doesn't seem to have an excessive amount of other applications, but at the same time, it's, um, it, at the same time, it, it doesn't have, um, oh, let me look in here. Cursor themes. Okay, so it's saying it, uh, 
it doesn't have an excessive amount of applications. It has just enough. There's some things that I want to do, like I'd, I'd remove WPS Office and Chrome because I just don't want those on my system due to their EULAs. Um, but uh, it does have all of the other applications that I would want to install on a system. So let me know in the comments down below. After I'm done running Solace for a little bit, which it's probably running its course, should I try and run uh, Deepin for a little while on my main media, media PC, see how it performs? I can't, afford, uh, can't uh, imagine it will perform poorly, and it'd be nice to give this thing a full-scale test because it is, uh, it is a pretty nice system. So uh, let me know what you think. Overall, what I think about what I'm seeing here, it looks like there are enough improvements that um, there are enough improvements here that I think that um, uh, I think it's moving itself into an arena where it'd be a distro that I might even feel comfortable starting to recommend. I'd want to run it a little bit to know for sure. It's uh, out of the box, so it has it's full featured. It feels comfortable. It feels very nice. It feels smooth. The ability to set it up a variety of different ways is certainly an advantage. Uh, there are some things that it does seem to be missing, like the ability to put your tasks across the bottom, unless maybe they are there and I just haven't found them yet. Again, these are types of things that I would research as I am um, uh, installing this. So I think I might actually go ahead and give this a go on my main media PC here. Uh, give it a try, see how it works. Um, and uh, overall, I think the installer is good and it's it's nice looking. It feels nice. This feels like a complete system. And uh, it's it's interesting that that uh, that Deepin has evolved into into a system that I would feel comfortable running um, as far as uh, what it does seem to have, how it's uh, how it's working, the customizability, the ability to maneuver and and uh, manage your menus in different ways. It's just it's it looks nice. It looks nice. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Is this something we should run? Uh, I'll be open to your suggestions and feedback. So, with all of that being said, uh, thanks for checking out this video, and uh, definitely have a look at Deepin. I, I would say this thing's uh, getting to be pretty stinking good. Uh, I'll probably give it a try here myself, see what I think after a little bit. Don't forget, you can check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M, that's T-O-M-M. You can check out the all of the main ways you can help support Switch to Linux on the website, switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And uh, we do also have some merchandise. If you want to pick up a coffee cup, a mouse pad, a t-shirt, anything else like that, uh, check out shop.switchtolinux.com. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.